Hello everyone, this is a notice uh, about the last three lectures about halfway rectifier either with uh, resistive load or uh, RL load and uh, it's about the diode itself how we select the diode and the characteristic of the diode that we are going to select depends on the voltage and the current the, vol the, cu the voltage across the diode during uh, the second half period of the period which is when the voltage appear across the diode which is when the diode is off and normally when the diode is off as for example when we have this load either resistive or RL load the voltage appear across the diode is the same as the voltage of the supply which is minus V maximum so the blocking voltage uh, characteristic of the diode is V maximum which is equal to rho 2 of V RMS then the current carrying capability of the diode when the current is flowing through the diode we have to take into, into consideration is the current continuous or discontinuous so it's, it depends on the current that is flowing through the diode which is the DC which is the peak current during the resistive load we said that the current will be something like that so we will take the maximum current that the current that the diode can handle so we take the peak value of the current or greater than the peak value for safety consideration in this lecture which is lecture number four I will talk about half wave rectifier with RL load and a freewheeling diode So the circuit diagram of this, this is the voltage source, this is the diode number one, then this is the RL load, then there will be a voltage across the terminal of the load, and we will see what is the use of, use of this diode number two. As we said earlier, we have this voltage waveform. The output during the, during the first half cycle, the voltage across the diode will be like that. So the diode will turn on, meaning that the positive half cycle will appear across the load. then when the voltage changed its polarity to go to the negative half cycle the diode D1 will be will be off and diode T2 D, D2 will be on due to the current that is across the inductance due to the energy storage into the inductance so the voltage will be positive and negative here which will turn on diode number two so it will block the negative uh, half cycle of the voltage however the current if the inductance is much larger than the resistance the current will start from here with a delayed angle and then it will continue 
until the next cycle where the voltage will be on so the current will raise again and then fall in this manner so the current here is continuous it's it's almost pure DC current due to the large inductance and this is called continuous conduction mode of the output current the output voltage is the same as the half wave rectifier since we eliminated the negative voltage across the diode number across the across the load due to turn, turning on of diode 1 so it will be the same as the previous circuit without the without the inductance so it's V maximum over pi the current will be different because the current here is continuous the previous current waveform for a pure resistive load was only appearing during the uh, positive half cycle and then negative elsewhere, elsewhere which is considered discontinuous discontinuous current but now the current is continuous so we, so we will have uh, a Fourier series that represent the current the, the DC current component of this signal so first of all amplitude of the current at each harmonic is Vn over Zn whereas n can go from from 0 up to infinity and Vn will equal to V maximum over N and Zn will equal to the square root of R square plus omega L multiplied by N squared so it's, if it's the first harmonic it will be I1 if it's the second harmonic it will be I2 and so on so the RMS current the output RMS current which is equal to which is not equal actually to the input RMS current will equal to the square root of sigma k from 0 up to infinity i k rms and i will expand it further it will be i dc square plus i1 square over over 2 plus i2 square over 2 plus until i n square over 2 or we ca I can write it in this way I'll put it i1 over square root of 2 whole square and i2 over square root of 2 whole square and also for this one this is if the current waveform is something like that meaning that there is a maximum and a minimum current or there is a peak to peak repel between the maximum and the minimum and if if L is very very high compared to the resistor then there is no AC terms of the Fourier series we will only have the DC term so it will be the current will be V maximum over by multiplied by R I will give an example
if I have this is an example if I have a voltage source equal to 240 volt RMS and then the resistor is 8 ohm A assuming L is almost infinity which is very large determine the output power and the output current so from here i as a function of omega t is equal to i output which is equal to v maximum or pi r since the L is infinity it will be a purely DC current so it's 240 multiplied by the square root of 2 to make it maximum voltage divided by the resistance which is 8 multiplied by pi this will give me around 13.5 amperes which is actually equal to I output RMS then the power output will be I output square RMS multiplied by the resistance so it's 13.5 all square multiplied by 8 this gives 1459 watts the power factor will be P output over S which is equal to going to the next page since the power factor is equal to P output over S we know that P output is 1459 divided by P output RMS multiplied by I S RMS and if I draw the waveform we can see that if this is the voltage across the load since the L is infinity then output current will be purely DC if I want to find this is the I output this is V output if I want to find V uh, I of the source the source current will be only the first cycle because the second cycle is actually drawn from the inductor the current is drawn from the inductor so this will be the current of the source so I input RMS will be equal to the square root of 1 over 2 pi from 0 to pi 13.5 squared dt so this will give me 9.55 ampere so the power factor will equal to 1459 divided by 240 the input voltage RMS multiplied by 9.55 and this will equal 2.637 lagging power factor B we have to find the out the output current or the current in each diode so each diode for example diode number one has a current similar to the input current diode number two which is turned on during negative half cycle is the same so actually ID1 is equal to ID2 so I can say 
the average i d1 is equal to i output over 2 which is 13.5 over 2 and this is 6.75 ampere c in this example is find the value of l that limits the variation in I0 to 10%. So since now we have a peak-to-peak -peak ripple in the current, meaning that the current is not purely sinus, uh, DC current, uh, we need the peak to peak ripple to be 10% or less. So in this way we have to use the Fourier series. So using Fourier series, I will neglect a second third and fourth and so on harmonics and I will only take the fundamental harmonic which is V1 which is V maximum divided by 2 which is equal to square root of 2 multiplied by 240 divided by 2 which is equal to 170 volt Now, the peak to peak ripple, which is delta i0, which is i maximum minus i minimum, will give me 10%. 10% is 0.1 multiplied by the output current. So I will say 0.1 multiplied by the output current, which is 13.5. It should be 13.5. So the peak to peak ripple will be around 1.35 ampere. And the amplitude then. will equal to delta i0 over 2 so it equal to 0.675 so the maximum current will be 13.5 plus 0.675 and this will give me 14.25 13.5 it's one point one two five. Then Z one is equal to V one over I one. So it's one seventy over I one, which is point six seven five, which is equal to two hundred and fifty one ohms. So now I can find the inductor. So the Z is 125 square root of R, which is 8 square, plus omega, which is 377. It's uh, 60 multiplied by 2 pi multiplied by L square. And since L is the unknown, we rearranged this equation and found that L is 0.67 Henry. So we take L to be equal to 0.75 Henry, just for safety reason.